President Trump uh, says Democrats and Republicans could reach a deal today on funneling more money into the government's Paycheck Protection Program for small businesses. Senator uh, Marco Rubio joins us now. He's chairman of the Senate Small Business Committee. Thought maybe it was going to happen yesterday. Senator, what, what, what's happening? Where are we at this point in time? I just want to confirm I can hear you. You can hear me because I, I lost you there. I know I'm hearing myself like six times, but uh, anyway. All right, yeah. So now, we're, we're I think we have the outlines of, yeah. Uh, so I think we have the outlines of a pretty good deal uh, here for the most part. It's a deal we could have had a week ago. What I want to caution everybody about right now is, you know, even if that money is approved on Wednesday, <clears throat> it's going to take some time now. They, they have to redo the entire SBA website to meet these new parameters with the money that's set aside for banks under 10 billion in assets and 1 billion in assets. And what I'm asking them to do is to start doing that now, not to wait until Thursday or Wednesday when this passes, because we're going to have on you know Thursday, whenever this opens up, you're going to have 800, 900,000 applications. They're going to hit the system all at once. We're going to go right back to the same problems we were having in the early days of the launch. So I hope that these next four days, first of all, this is the price for what's happened here, this delay in funding. But second, I hope we don't waste the next three or four days and we set up that system so it can launch as easily as possible, or we're going to have another massive disruption here. So it's going to happen today, in your view? Well, the Senate, I hope, will vote it out today unanimously, right. unless somebody flies to D.C. and blocks it. We'll see. You know, the House has different procedures. I hope, that I believe, you know, if they've got a deal, I think they'll do what it takes to get it done. And then you've got to relaunch this, you know, and they've got to redo the website, the e-tran system, um, the online portal. And I'm asking them to start working on that now. Just assume it's going to pass and get ready for it. Don't wait till it's signed to do that. Uh, we can't afford to waste all these days. People are hurting right now. How would you err that people that make sure that everyone who needs it gets it, which means some people that shouldn't get it are getting it, or to make sure that certain <sighs> entities don't get it, some people who do deserve to get it don't get it. How, how would you well, err on that? Because there's a lot of criticism and there's a lot of second guessing on who's getting it, who deserves it, who shouldn't get it. Right. That, that's just part, that's par for the course. Well, so here's what happened. We, you know, we, we were asked to draft this to cover as many people as possible. So not just small business, but not for profits and 1099, you know, independent contractors. And then we were asked specifically to include restaurants and the hospitality industry, hotels, because they have been the first one hit. Remember, this is a month ago. They were the first ones to get hit with closures and the like. And then we were, had to write affiliation rules because, there, you know, these hotels, it may say Marriott or Hyatt or Hilton, but it's actually owned by an individual. It's just the flag that's on it. And the same can happen with restaurants and franchises. And so there have been some people approved, some companies that I believe should not have been, even under the intent of the law. And that comes down to the certification process and how they were certified into the system. Uh, look, there were glitches made. There's no doubt about it. Um, in the end, take comfort in the fact the money has to go to the workers. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter who a worker is working for. We want to keep them employed. This is not a bailout of any company. But I think certainly the goal here is to get the money into the hands of businesses who don't have anywhere else to go for money, including, you know, the stock market, shareholders, you know, uh, other sort of credit lines. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is we were talking about Harvard University, which has a $41 billion endowment uh, taking the money, and whether you think they should give that money back. Yeah, look, I, I don't know the details of how they qualified for it or how they got it. I imagine they're organized as a C3 of some sort. Um, you know, we we thought about putting a need test on the front, and I want everybody to understand the more requirements we came up with, the harder it was going to be uh, to get the money right. out the door. The goal here is to get money out quickly. So we sort of erred on the side of expediency because we felt this was an emergency situation. In emergencies, mistakes are going to be made, but the biggest mistake you can make is to move too slowly. Um, I think everybody now will have to what look at these organizations. What about the transparency piece? Well, what about the transparency two... piece and having some yeah. kind of inspector general on top of this, given given the fact that we don't have transparency and that right. the president well, there will be is now inspector general. removed? The... Yeah, there is an inspector and general. We'll the small who, business who selected, administration. Right? right. Well, the SBA, no, but the SBA has an inspector general, a very good one, and they, they are going to look at this program as they do every program that's done, on, in addition to whatever CARES Act does, in addition to congressional oversight. Look, guys, let there be no doubt, okay, they made 14 years worth of loans in 12 days. And when you do something like that so rapidly, there are going to be unintended consequences, issues you didn't foresee, uh, and things you probably would have done differently. There's no doubt about it. 
But ultimately, we're dealing with an emergency here. And so what we're trying to do is push money out as quickly as possible into the hands of workers. And that's the fallback here. This becomes a loan that has to be paid back if you don't get it into the hands of your workers. The hope here was to keep as many people employed as possible. Yeah. Senator, when should we reopen? And what do you think of, of some of the protests that we're seeing? We had someone refer to those protesters as, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Far right wingers or something. You think you got to be a far right yeah. winger to, to want to get back to work? Or what? Do you, no, are these I don't even. I don't think it's ideological. I'll say this to you though. Um, here's the. If you, I hear people out there talking about like we should keep things the way they are now until the virus goes away or until it's at a certain level. I agree. Theoretically, that's the right approach. It's also not realistic. Right. Okay. It's important for leaders to recognize that there will come a point where no matter what rules we come up with, people will stop following them. So we're, it's a balancing act here, and it really should put pressure on leaders to expedite exactly. the things we're going to need to make a reopening safer. All the right, rapid Senator. testing is important.